Hello, everybody, and welcome to what should we call this? Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, I have no idea. <laughs> let's let's have a conversation with Christian Goff. Did I do it right? You Did I do your name right? Yep. yep. Oh, perfect. Awesome. So if you guys don't recognize his name or his um, voice for the point two seconds I let him talk, um, he is a brilliant voice actor and a, <laughs> I don't know about brilliant, but no, all right. no, you are, you are. I'm serious. And right. um, an amazing author. And um, most of you should know Mediocre him. Best. <laughs> yeah, no, most of you guys should know him because you play the voice of KL. Mm -hmm. So, okay, I'm going to ask straight up first because I'm sure everybody is wondering. Is there anything you can tell us about the Forbidden Love mod? I mean, obviously it's still in development, but mm -hmm. is there anything you can tell us at all? Any something? <laughs> well, most of it's a little hush-hush, but I can probably give you guys the basically the, the main idea. Um, although I'm pretty sure a lot of people already uh, already know what the main idea is, is that you go, you find yourself in, uh, you find yourself going into, um, into High Rock, uh, close to the border between High Rock and, and Skyrim. And there you meet uh, several different tribes um, which some of them are force are forsworn, but others aren't forsworn, mm -hmm. and you end up there in the process of a lot of them turning forsworn. And there's a there's a big story behind that, but um, it's basically uh, you end up in this place, and these these tribes are warring against each other. And you meet KL through that, through through all that, and yeah, you begin to form a relationship with him. Wow, well, that's cool. I know you did an absolute brilliant job with his voice, and thank you. You're welcome. Um, and I said this in a one of my episodes. Hopefully, you didn't see it, but. Um, when you voice his character like the personality of him the look is great but i feel like the thing that really makes his character is your voice <laughs> like for example for example like um bishop's character they did a mm -hmm. brilliant job river did a brilliant job with the character and the performance and the script was great and that he, he did yeah so but he would say things and i would get mad i'd get frustrated i'd be like oh my gosh you're so romantic but i feel like <laughs> sadly that was the point of the character i believe <laughs> yes yes but i feel like when kale talks he could talk about the weather and i'd have like <laughs> stars in my eyes <laughs> uh, is that so y yeah yes and i'm oh my gosh i'm gonna be tongue tied right now but yeah you did a really good job with it and i know we're all very excited about it um this upcoming mod are you one of the writers in it i i am the lead writer in fact okay that's cool that's yeah. really neat um I it's know it's it's a lot it's a lot of work yeah. it's it's a lot of hard work but um i think i think i can handle it so yeah you definitely can from your book and you have a book too and guys right. if, if you have not read this book it's called it's called black hearts the witch hunt if you haven't read it yes. you should write read it <laughs> and you should tell your friends tell your family and then tell like the whole world because you did a brilliant job with it Thank you. Actually, uh, it's the Black Hearts series, and okay. the Witch Hunt is the first of the novellas. Okay. 
and um, a lot of people who who are who are fans of the book probably already know what the next one's going to be. It's going to be yes. Black Hearts, the Crimson Girl. Yes, yes, <laughs> I saw the end and I wasn't expecting it, and I was like, oh my gosh, that's so cool. <laughs> Do you want to give them a little background about your book, because uh, so people can. Um, about it? Yeah, it's 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 basically a dark dystopian fantasy. Um, if, if you're into, um, if you're into Stephen King or H.P. Lovecraft or Dean, uh, ah, not Dean Koontz, but, um, ah, I can't think of his name. He's one of my favorite writers and I can't think of his name right now. Some guy that writes like you or you write like them. I, I keep wanting to say John Carpenter, but I don't think that's right. But anyways, um, if, if you're into uh, horror or if you're into action, if you're into um, very fantasy things, dystopian type stuff, you will definitely, you will definitely enjoy uh, the Black Heart series. Yeah. Um, it, it, it follows, it follows the, the main protagonist who, uh, who I've, actually intentionally left nameless i was about to say what is his name i was he, like looking it up to be prepared he actually does it. not have a name okay. um his, his um what what i call him is tw which is short for the witch okay but he he has a he has a lot of names um a lot of people have grown accustomed to calling him the kid um, but he he has a lot of different um, titles throughout the throughout the series. But uh, for the most part, I just call him the witch. Nice. That's and cool. and yeah, you you follow this guy along as he's traversing the this dystopian landscape, and yeah, he is he is in fact a witch and is able to use magic uh, through a language that is written into his skin. Yeah, that was cool. I was reading that and I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> but that's really, that's a really unique idea. And what I love about your book is it feels so original. And like the characters, I like I hadn't heard of characters like that before. I mean, was there somewhere you got like your inspiration from? Um, there, there's, there's no, um, direct inspiration. Like there, there, there's, there's no character that I took like initial inspiration to create uh, TW. But there are like certain characteristics that I that I had taken from uh, from other like different types of characters like that like kind of like a young small skinny kind of kid he's got white hair he's he's very young he's like 18 okay and well that might not be young for some people but um but yeah I just kind of um I can't really say that that there are any uh like any 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 characters I took inspiration from that I could really say definitively that yeah this 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 character is based off of this person. Um, but the other characters, the sporting characters, um, one named William, is actually kind of based off of my dad. Really? Yeah. That's neat. Kind That's of a. Cool. Yeah, kind of a tough, grizzled father figure for the witch to 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 have experiences with. Nice. And what I love about your book, well, it's just you in general. You really have the ability to make people feel, in my personal opinion. <laughs> you know, people, Aww. they play video games for different reasons. One of the reasons why I play video games, especially RPGs, is for feelings it gives you obviously it's not real but i mean it's cool to be able to be a hero and you know kill a dragon mm -hmm. but with you like with your character with kale you really put like feelings like when i see him i'm like oh my gosh it's kale <laughs> i'm gonna melt into a puddle on the floor but then even with your book it's 
no, don't get me wrong. It's not like kale, but you you <laughs> set a tone to it. Like I don't know if you mind if I read. Can I read part of your book? Like um, paragraph or yeah, yeah, yeah. Just go, ahead. So, go ahead. Just yeah, just a little paragraph that um stood out to me. It's the go first right page, and it said, "I don't feel anything now." All I see now is white, black, and many shades gray. These are the only colors I see now. All the rest of them are lost to me. I do not understand them. They are no longer a concept I can just believe anymore. They are all gone, except one, blood. And I'm so sorry if I butchered that. Um, <laughs> That's fine. But when I read it, I was like, oh my gosh. Like, it just you did a really good job of making the reader get into the mindset of the character, mm -hmm. but also um, describing the, you did a really good job with the imagery. And I felt like I wasn't just reading words. I was like, literally there. Like <laughs> I was hacking people, I was hacking my skin up, porn, whatever, <laughs> sorry. Don't wanna do any spoilers, but it, it's really good. So you really do a good job with really connecting, um, I feel like with readers, but also with um, people who who get to see your characters that you voice as well. So yeah, yeah. Um, I, actually, actually, as a matter of fact, I am working on a audiobook of uh, Blackheart's The Witch Hunt. So. Yes, yes. Sorry. So that's something to look forward to. <laughs> yes. I'm sorry. I just, I love listening to your voice and I'm trying really <laughs> hard not to sound like a skeevy band girl in here, this conversation, but I, I really it's love right. listening to your voice. <laughs> so yeah, you guys should get the book and the audio book too. So that's, that's really cool. Do you have any other projects or anything you're working on? Um, actually, as a matter of fact, uh, since the beginning of this year, I have been working with Out of Sight Games, which is a which is a game studio who primarily makes or is going to make. Um, there's a there's a term for it, but it's basically games that are made for uh, for blind people for uh, wow. for seeing impaired people. And I voice a character for their first game, which is going to have its. Um, I'm not sure. I'm not, I'm not. I'm not sure. Like on a specific date, but uh, sometime this month, they will be releasing a an official trailer for it. Oh, awesome! That is so cool. That's brilliant that they're doing that, and that's so cool that you're a part of that. And like, even to like even for i keep seeing this over over again and i'm so sorry but like i feel like just hearing your voice is like it's a gift because it's like you just really know how to capture a character and really make a person feel um wow. the character so yeah I'm sorry. Well, I, cer I certainly try <laughs> so, um yeah. in fact in fact i have uh i've just recently gotten into um training other voice actors uh to well to to be better voice actors um i'm i'm kind of unofficially the um i guess the 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 voice director of of the mod as well um uh like, but, but like i said i'm not i'm not the official one i'm just kind of training the other the other actors so that they can so that they can give it their their give it a hundred percent basically. That's cool. And yeah, it turns out it turns out I'm actually pretty good at teaching other people how to do it. So that's brilliant. And have you yourself had any training, or were you just like, oh, I want to be a voice actor. I'm just gonna <laughs> do this. Um. Well. I, I actually got into uh, uh, performing, not not voice acting, but performing when I was in middle school. So basically, I got my 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 taste for for 
uh, voice acting from sock puppets. Oh, okay. <laughs> the 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 very first thing that our art director uh, got us to do, our first assignment was, is that we were to, we were supposed to write an educational uh, script designed to teach children like something, and uh, we were also supposed to design a sock puppet to go along with it. And then we stood up before the class and we did this, that, and the other. And it was at that point that I realized I'm pretty good at this. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> especially when you can figure out what you like, especially at a young age. It's just, it really well, helps. It's cool. To be fair, I, 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 I went from doing different things before I realized that voice acting was something that I wanted to pursue as a career. Nice. Dude, how did you get hooked up with the um, Skyrim romance? Um, it's not a secret. No, no, it's, it's not a secret. Uh, a lot of people actually know me from uh, Interesting NPCs, which is a Skyrim mod. And for those of you that, that actually don't know about it, it is the single largest mod on the Nexus. And it very well could be the single largest mod, period. Because I, I believe the last time I, I checked it, it was about two gigabytes worth of information. Whoa. That's and cool. the, the reason why it's so big is because Chris, uh, Chris Takahashi, who is the, who is the developer of the... Eh, developer of the mod um he recruited i want to say like close to like a hundred voice actors to voice their like individual characters wow and uh i i voiced i believe i, be, I believe i voiced four of them i can't i can't remember this was this is a while back now and um mara who is the developer of uh, of Skyrim Romance and Forbidden Love? She uh, was also a voice actor for it, and it, it, and she started talking to Chris Takahashi about like how to mod and all this, that, and the other. Mm -hmm. And I guess just like you, Mara fell in love with my voice and uh, and messaged me and asked me if I wanted to do a part in it, and I said yes, and. Yeah, uh, a friendship kind of spawned from that, and I've been with her since I would want to say like three years now. Nice, that's awesome, and she yeah. is brilliant. Like, I see all the work she's done on this, and um, I saw like one of her videos, no, a couple of her videos, how she was like showing how to make like a follower or something. I'm like. That'd be so cool if I could do that, but that looks very confusing. Um, but yeah, she's brilliant too. I have going back to KL. Okay, mm -hmm. I'm curious. Personality differences between Bishop and Kale. What would you say? Polar opposites. Okay. <laughs> Out, just outright polar opposites. Um, where where Bishop was very stern and. Uh, what's what's a nice way of putting it? Um, he was very um. He's he jerk. knew what he wanted. <laughs> yeah, basically, yeah. This, He's this a jerk. Go right ahead and say it. He was kind of a dick. Yeah, yeah, he was. But with with KL, um, a lot of people may remember KL from uh, Skyrim Romance. Uh, I guess it was one point oh or two point oh. Mm -hmm. But he was very um seductive yes yes but with uh with, with uh with with forbidden love i i i i actually went on a lot of uh a lot of messengers or, or a lot of uh chat rooms and whatnot that had uh skyrim romance fans in it and i i kind of just got their feedback like what they didn't like about about bishop mm -hmm. and I, I started using that to to plan out how I was going to, how I was going to make KL because I didn't, I didn't really want to make him just another version of Bishop, yeah. which, which uh, honestly, I think that if, if we were to try to keep him the way he originally was, then 
I think that would kind of that that would be the outcome that he would just be just a a a, a blonde version of Bishop basically. Yeah. So I, I I really wanted to make him his his own character. the The best way I can I can describe him is that he he's innocent. Mm-hmm. Like um, he's not is is he jaded or not jaded or i would say he's not jaded um he he's very um family oriented he's very uh protective of his village and yeah i might as well come out and say it he's a virgin <gasps> really oh my gosh that's so cool i'm sorry <laughs> don't ask me i'm sorry i and <laughs> Sorry, Mara, if if that's a spoiler, but she asked, so you know. I'm sorry, I got way too excited over that, and I'm like, I'm not 18, but I just, I don't know. I thought that was so cool to hear about the character. Um, how old is KL? Is he is he 18? I can't remember, because I think um, he said it in the we- mod. We we did change that up a little bit. Originally, he was supposed to be nineteen. Okay. Um, but now, due to uh, story specific reasons, uh, we bumped his age up to twenty two. Oh, okay. So he's a little older. Nice. Yeah. And I remember I played two point I played three point mm. and when I finally got. A decent gaming laptop but I remember before when I couldn't didn't have access to mods and didn't know how to use them I would watch the YouTube videos like over and over again on the channel Mm -hmm. and it's funny because I feel like in 2.0 and 1.0 compared to 3.0 his character is a little bit kind of different in a sense I guess like 1.0 1.0 and 2.0 he was like locked in the cage and i'm like oh my gosh i want to get him out of the cage and then when we saw his tribe and stuff i'm like i want to ditch bishop is that bad <laughs> i want to ride the elk i want to go off an adventure with him he was just so like you just wanted to go with him and which is bad i know but <laughs> he was well, very you like, weren't the only one <laughs> yeah, but um, he was very desirable, and in three point he's still desirable. But I feel like it's it's a little different. Almost not so much like he's trying to get to you, but he's just kind of he's there, and then he sees you. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, which I guess was better because then. I, I still really like the character, but, but I wasn't so much, okay, I want to run away with Kale now. <laughs> Sorry, Bishop. <laughs> well, in, in 3.0, uh, it was basically supposed to be, uh, it was basically a, a teaser for, for things to come for, for mm-hmm. Forbidden Love. Um, basically, we just wanted to distance, uh, distance Kale as far away as we possibly could from Bishop. We wanted to give their characters kind of a wide berth. We didn't want them to be similar in any kind of way. So we we kind of pushed back on the on the seductive traits. And and believe me, later on he does still have that. But mm-hmm. we we're, we're basically trying to like really have a focus on the relationship development. Yeah. Like not, not so, just yeah. not just automatically him just coming on to you and say, hey baby. <laughs> yeah and that's good because you know i mean personally like i read a lot of romance books i'm a romance junkie um <laughs> and people have different types of books you know and they have those ones where you have the they're corny it's like that instant love <laughs> like i see you you see me we're so mates oh my god amazing happily ever after and that's okay because some people that's what they like and i like that sometimes However, you know, it's really cool when you can really start and develop a relationship because it feels deeper and Mm -hmm. um, more realistic. So that's cool that you guys are doing it that way. 
Yeah, my, my main focus is to make the relationship feel as real as possible. Nice. I'm like so excited right now for this mod to come out. And, uh, <laughs> and I know this is a treat, not only for me, but the um, people watching my channel, because like the day the preview dropped for Forbidden mm -hmm. Love, someone posted on one of my videos and they were like, oh my gosh, did you see this? <laughs> Look, here's the link. Um, and I've had other people too. I did a Let's Play of Skyrim Romance and they're like, mm. you should do this mod. It's coming. Are you going to do this mod? <laughs> and I'm like, yes, as soon as it comes out. I'm not waiting four months like I did with 3.0. <laughs> so <laughs> I know we're all really excited and um, we're really huge fans of you. All right. So oh. random, random. Are you a gamer? Do you play uh, yeah. video games? I'm, I'm definitely a gamer. Nice. Have you played Skyrim? Stupid question. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I, I've played. I played Skyrim since it first came out okay. in uh, in uh, twenty eleven. Nice. And what? I still play it to this day. Oh, that's cool. And do you? I feel like I'm asking you redundant questions, but so I'm presuming you use mods too, and like all of that stuff. Of course. How else would I? Make sure that my voice sounds just right. <laughs> so what's your favorite mod to use? Aside from, I mean, obviously, I'm sure you like Skyrim Romance, but like personal, <laughs> personally, like when you start a game, you're like, I have to have this mod to use. Uh, Which would, one's your favorite? Would you believe I actually haven't finished Skyrim Romance yet? Nah, you haven't finished it. Sadly, I have not. Um, I, I have it specifically for one character, and I just haven't played that character in a while. It's it's nothing on the on the mod itself. Mara did a, a wonderful job. All yeah. the actors and everything they did amazing. But I'm just not playing that character yet. But to answer your question, I would have to say my personal favorite, the the one that I find the most fun is a flying mod i absolutely love the flying mod and i i usually play a mage just specifically to use the the flying the the, the flying animations and all that that like i i can't think of the of the of the author who made it but they did just a fantastic job of of making the animations look look very fluid and just look, looks really nice it's a very polished a very polished mod and it looks really good and, it, and it's fun cool. it, is, yeah. it is absolutely fun it beats any kind of fast travel like hands down i'm just wondering how the game doesn't crash i just keep thinking i'm like wait how high can you go before it, you have to stop that's so cool though um i'm doing <laughs> a mod right now where the follower can actually fly you can fly and oh, go cool. back um which is pretty cool um i guess um but yeah so what so you typically like the mage characters That's yeah for the most part although i i do have different characters for different play styles um uh, it, it really like messes with my load order because like each of those characters have their own independent mods and it just gets really confusing and just bundled up and everything's a huge mess yeah yes i definitely Which, know what you mean <laughs> i'm pretty sure that most people who play skyrim know exactly what I oh my gosh yes and it was like yeah i remember downloading skyrim romance 3.0 was like i felt like i was at war because of all the mods <laughs> and all the mods i had you know it was worth oh. it and they did a good video showing how to but it <laughs> took me a while to figure everything out but yeah but well that that is that is one thing about uh forbidden love is that we are trying to make it as independent as as humanly possible in fact um if if we if we get everything done correctly it should be its its own its own mod it, it, it doesn't it won't have any other requirements whatsoever oh my god 
because I almost yeah. cried. I almost cried. I'm like, come on, I'm determined to do this. I watched the video like 50 times and I'm like awful with technology. Everything I've done on my channel has been self-taught and I watch YouTube videos, I read and stuff. So it was tricky for me, but worth it. So that mm -hmm. is so cool. And if you guys do that, that'll be absolutely amazing. Yeah. So. Well, well, we, we, we have our own animators, own writers, um, own, uh, uh, people who, who designed the meshes, the armors, the weapons, uh, the mounts, the creatures, all that. We have our own to do that. So, um, I, re I really don't think that, uh, that Forbidden Love is going to have any requirements. So for people, for people who don't like to like download a whole bunch of mods just to get one mod working. Yeah. You're going to be in luck, guys. Yeah. Exactly. You're going to be in luck. Yes. Yes. And I've like, when I first started getting into mods, and the reason why I got into mods actually was because of Skyrim Romance. That was before I had oh, a computer. Really? Yeah, because I, I was just looking online and like my favorite game of all time is, I mean, aside from Skyrim, but um, Dragon Age Inquisition, you know, because I really love their storylines, their romance storylines. I was just mm. looking and I was like, okay, I've watched these videos like a thousand times. What else is there out there? And I saw <laughs> the video for it and I was like, where can I buy this? And then I found out it was a mod. I'm like, wait, what's a mod? And then I found out what that one is, was and I was like, crap, I don't have a computer, wow. you know. Um, <laughs> But it was worth it, you know, it was definitely, it was, it was worth it once I got a computer and once I figured out how to do everything. So, yeah. Wow. I, I, I actually feel like an old man now because <laughs> I have been modding since Morrowind. But what <laughs> type of play style do you have? Are you like a person who likes to sneak or do you just like to run up on people and just kill them or <laughs> I'm sorry I'm asking I'm actually asking myself because I'm just so curious <laughs> well well like I said before I I have different characters for each kind of play style so it, it really just depends on how I feel mm -hmm. like sometimes I'll be in the mood to bring out uh, one of my Nordic adventurers with the dual swords and just dicing people up like like so much ham or something something <laughs> ham like or flying around with my with my little witch mage and just setting people on fire and healing her her comrades or i can be my little thief little sneak thief and have her running around being sneaky <laughs> clearly nice. i need more coffee nice <laughs> all right so I guess one more question. What is your favorite game of all time? Oh, wow. That's a difficult one. Favorite game of all time. Mm. Oh, I know. Barbie's Dream House. <laughs> Shut up. No, I, love, I love that game. That is an awesome game. Okay, why? Why? <laughs> I mean, I'm not, I'm not saying that's bad, but... I just that was I I didn't even expect. Uh, that. I'm I, I'm joking. I'm joking. Oh gosh, sorry. I'm gullible. I thought you were serious. <laughs> Honestly, I I uh, it, this this is this is iffy. This is this, like my my favorite game kind of changes, uh, like just depending on my mood or whatever. But I would say I pl I have played Fallout New Vegas the most. Out of any game that I've ever played, I think I've fall, I, I think I've played Fallout New Vegas like more like more hours than than probably Skyrim, Fallout Four, and like any other game combined. Nice. I've actually never played that. Oh, it's it's awesome. Have you have you ever played uh, Fallout uh, Fallout Three? I played Fallout Three. And I played Fallout Four. But I didn't do New Vegas. Why? Why is New Vegas so good? 
Um, well, I, I actually grew up um, playing the first two Fallouts, Fallout 1 and 2, and uh, New Vegas follows the Fallout 1 and 2 narrative a lot more than, than 3 does. Because uh, you, you, actually even, you actually even meet uh, characters from Fallout 2 in Fallout New Vegas. Nice. Okay. And and I, I just I really just love the the story about the courier and all the different factions and all that. They just they re they really did a stand up job building this world, and I, I just I really love it. Nice. Well, thank you so much, Christian, for for coming on my channel. This was absolutely epic, and I'm gonna have a bunch of links in the description. Um, gonna have a link to your book you guys should buy his book then his audio <laughs> please book. please please well the the, the audio book is not out yet and uh, i can't give a specific date when um, so keep an yeah. eye out for it guys okay i'll keep an eye out for it when i right. when i see it i will definitely give a shout out to it also uh don't forget to check out out of sight games um, their first game will be coming out very soon, and it's called A Hero's Call, and I play Matthias the Ranger. Nice. So we'll have a link for that. We'll have a link for your book. We'll have a link for Skyrim Romance, and you guys should check out all that stuff. So thank you guys for watching, and I will see you guys next time.